For this video, we are working off of O3 looping comp.aep. Feel free to open up this file. What I want to do before we jump over to the scene and start looping the composition, we want to make sure that the duration of this composition matches the animation. And right now we go out to 106. So I'm going to click once on the composition panel and then use Command K or Control K if you're on Windows to access the composition settings. And right down here for duration, I want to change this to 106. There we are. And once you have that set, you can click OK. And this will now cut the animation so that it will loop. If we were to hit play, we're seeing the entire timeline, the entire composition, and this is how it will look when looped. So if we come back now to the scene composition, I'm just going to click once on scene. We can see our background file here. I want to come over to the project panel and locate red thunder walk cycle. That's the one we just worked on and click and drag and bring it onto the timeline above the background file. The character is too big for the scene, but that's okay. We're just going to hit S and then hold and shift and hit P to bring up scale and position. I'm going to reduce the scale to about 42. That'll bring the character down like so. And we're also going to come in now to the position and we just want to bring him over to the right side of the screen. So if I click and drag on position, we can bring him over close to 1600 right now should work. And we're actually going to move him off the screen here eventually, but right now we want him on screen so we can confirm that the loop we're going to create is going to work. So here is how we create a loop because right now, if we were to play this out, you can see it goes once and then he disappears. If we were to try to expand this composition, we can't because it only goes for one second and six frames. So to create a loop, you first need to click on the layer that you want to loop. So in this case, Red Thunder Walk Cycle. Go up to Layer, Time, and enable Time Remapping. You can also use Alt, Command, or Control plus T to get to this option. You'll notice that on our composition, there are two keyframes that were created with time remap. If I hit K, I can go to that last keyframe. You can see that the character is no longer on screen. So what I want to do is page up or go back one frame. And next to time remap, we can add a keyframe. So I'll click the add keyframe button to add that keyframe. Then I want to come over to the original keyframe, the last original keyframe, click on it, and then hit the delete key. That way we only have two keyframes once again for this composition. Now we want to add an expression and you can do this a couple of different ways. You can click on the effect that you want to alter. So time remap, and we could go up to animation and add expression, or you can use alt shift equal. Or if you want, you can alt and click on the stopwatch and that will bring up the ability to add in expressions. And in the case of the expression we want to create, we can type it out or we can click on what appears to be that play button. This will give us a list of expressions. Go to property and then loop out duration. So the code is in place and we can click off. And now, if I were to come over to my composition and click and drag, you can see I can extend the composition out now for as long as I want. And if I were to go back to the beginning and hit the play button, you can see that he is looping and the loop is working and everything is going good. I notice that my hair is a little bit exaggerated here with the loop now that I have a background in place. So very quickly, I'm just going to go back into this cycle here and locate those up positions for the hair. So right here, and I just want to come in with the puppet and just sort of bring that down a little bit and not have it 
as exaggerated as it was. So once I readjust that, I can go back out to the scene and that helps with the animation. We don't want that <laughs> glitchy hair look. So what I'm going to do then is copy this frame over to the last frame on the animation. So I'll double click on that walk cycle, hit the tilde key, we'll copy all the keyframes, or you could just copy the hair pin for that first frame and then come over here and then we're going to paste. In order to get to that last keyframe, I'm going to have to extend the composition out just by a frame. And then I can go over to that last set of keyframes and paste to bring the hair back so it's not as crazy. We might have one there as well. I'm going to come in on frame 15 and bring the hair down a little bit like that as well. There we are. So now if I come back out to the scene, the hair should hopefully be a little bit more in control. We want a little bit of bounce to it, but we don't want it to be glitchy. So that is looking a little bit better. So with the animation set and everything looking good, we can save this file and then move on to the final step, which is moving the character across the screen.